Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now I just want to mention because there were some questions last time because I want to clarify because uh, the auto rotation okay when we mean by auto rotation it can happen in the sense it is a particular condition okay that condition is the power that is given to the rotor is 0. Okay. So, the power to the rotor if you say that is you can say P shaft this is what essentially the climb power this is the climb velocity this is the induced then you have rho okay this quantity very very simplistically only the because this is referred to only the main rotor okay because you say this is climb induced this is profile okay they will be zero at a particular descent velocity okay because this descent means v is negative v is negative means this quantity can be made equal to zero and that condition is called auto rotation okay please understand because you may think that these are all this is a descent state this is also a descent windmill brake is also a descent state everything is descent 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 but auto rotation when we mean it is that particular state where the power required to rotate the rotor is basically zero that is the engine has failed engine is not supplying any power that's all so but yeah huh? no no you have this also see you have a profile huh? in that graph that is why okay now you are asking that graph is drawn see you only to indicate see this is the graph you are talking about right v plus nu 0 is this axis essentially yes it is close to auto rotation because if you neglect this term that means the profile drag I am not including only the induced power okay because usually the induced power is much larger you, you understand this is not very large but it is there that is why the real operation to mathematical just the ideal definition for auto rotation simply say v plus nu 0 is auto rotation because you are considering only induced power okay you are not considering all the other power if you really consider everything you may have the tail rotor also may require and then there could be some transmission losses okay and then the fuselage drag also can be there so there can be several other factors contributing to the power of the engine which have to be supplied to the rotor but we are basically not including those in real life it may not happen at v plus nu 0 it will happen a little down v plus nu a little lower because even if you include this v plus nu is not 0 v plus nu is equal to this quantity you understand 
that is why auto rotation happens at a descent velocity slightly greater than the one that meets the V plus nu line, okay, this 0 value that is from real calculations. Okay. Because there was a question uh, last time where will it auto rotate here also, it will generate power, okay, but that condition you do not call it auto rotation, is it clear? Now, let us look at the, is a, there are some interesting physics associated with this auto rotation, I thought I will briefly explain that part today and then uh, see one is the, the is this, because this is very important for you, the power shaft. Okay. So, note down this forces on because which I started on a blade element in auto rotation. Okay. Because here I am going to just briefly describe one section and then we will analyze the auto rotation condition and the physics associated with that. Later you see the complexity which actually happens in uh, real life. Okay. You take a airfoil which is acting at a angle of attack, not angle of attack, this is the pitch angle theta and this is omega r which is due to the rotational velocity at that section and you have a because this is descending you have a u p this angle you call it phi and let us say this is x as last time and the resultant and this angle is phi okay this is a very simplistic problem of an aerofoil which has a oncoming flow and a flow which is coming up because it is descending. U p includes descent velocity as well as induced velocity, please understand that is why I use a very general perpendicular, the flow that comes perpendicular to the aerofoil plane of rotation that includes in the simple case the descent velocity and the induced velocity. Induced velocity is actually down, descent velocity <laughs> this is the relative error. Okay. Now tan phi that is the induced angle is basically u p over omega r it is fixed this angle is okay. once you know omega r once you know phi sorry u p you know this angle. Now, if you calculate what are the forces that act on this element that force is one is the lift force which you call it the force in the z direction another one is the x direction f z is l cosine phi plus d sin phi and f x is let us say d cosine phi minus l sin phi. Okay. Now, let us look at only the f x quantity. Okay. Of course, lift is dynamic pressure into you say with the unit section. So, you take a card into lift coefficient, this will be dynamic pressure card drag coefficient, but this quantity can be positive or negative because the f x, f x can be positive or negative or it can be 0 depending on of course, d and l contribute depending on the angle phi. Okay. Let us define the angle phi that is only the condition where this is 0, because if f x is 0 
please understand initially the rotor is rotating because the power is coming from the engine and that section is rotating with the omega r initially. Now engine is shut off or engine is failed, so engine is disconnected from the rotor and this is still rotating. Now what will happen you will have a descent you will generate an f x if f x is positive. So, I will put f x positive means your rotor will start because no other force only f x is acting it will decelerate okay. because f x positive deceleration. Okay of the section. If f x is 0 that is auto rotation basically because there is no force acting it will continue to rotate with that omega r. Okay. So, it will this is the condition for auto rotation that is why I said blade element in auto rotation we will see what and then if f x is negative, negative means uh, if this is this side then your airfoil will accelerate. Okay. That means deceleration means omega r decreases okay. here omega r increases here omega r constant okay that's a 3 but this we will relate to from here in terms of uh, coefficients rather than d and l because you can write this as this will become f bar you can take it c d naught okay because half rho v square card is thrown out. So, C d naught cosine phi C l sin phi you can keep this because C d naught is the aerofoil characteristic C l is also aerofoil characteristic. Okay. Now, you can take if f bar x is 0 that is what is auto rotation I am going to call it tan phi is what C d okay. this is for auto rotation condition I am putting a subscript a just to indicate that this is a auto rotation condition tan phi a C d naught over C a. It can, yeah. That we will write it later. That we will do it later. Right now, you take it as it is. Okay. Now you see, if this is greater than zero, that means what? You divide by tan phi is. What do you do? If this quantity is greater than 0, this quantity is less than 0 correspond to this three conditions, right? Yes or no? Because you say let us write that. Now you see this is always valid tan phi is u p over omega r. Okay. f x when this quantity becomes equal to this value which is that is phi equals phi a and then you can say tan phi is u p over omega r which is also equal to c d naught over c l this is the
auto rotation condition, condition for auto rotation for that element. Is it clear? I will always have some value for this. When this value is exactly equal to C D naught over C L, then I am in auto rotation. Okay. Now, let us look at the other uh, uh, three conditions. This is deceleration, Maybe I do not need this F z. Okay. This also this is also not necessary, I will write here tan phi is okay. for this condition, this is positive means what? This implies C D naught minus C L tan phi is greater than 0, right, because C D naught I am just dividing. In other words, this is tan phi is less than okay. This is is 0, this is the phi a I put it auto rotation and this is the other condition which is C D naught minus C L tan phi is greater than sorry this is less than 0. In other words this implies tan phi but greater than C D naught over C L. Okay. Now, you have 3, what we will do is we will go ahead and you take an airfoil, you know it is uh, characteristic with angle of attack. Now, what is my angle of attack? Please understand my angle of attack is basically alpha I call that which is this is my angle of attack. Now, I take a airfoil any airfoil draw the curve I maybe I erase this part because this is right now not required. Okay. Okay. We will plot the curve of tan inverse versus alpha, but keep the axis same axis in the sense x y same scale I would put it. So, you plot the same x and y scale because both are angles. Okay. This will be like this. Maybe I am not trying properly, it may go something like this. This is the curve for a given airfoil. Okay. You, you follow what I am saying? Because you take any airfoil, you know the drag value, change the angle of attack, and then plot tan inverse C D naught over C L like this. Now, this is a very interesting, this curve is very very important for uh, practice. Now, what is my angle of attack? Angle of attack is theta plus phi. Okay. Now, I this is 0, I take uh, some theta, Okay, this I call it theta. I draw a 45 degree line from here. Okay. This is 45 degrees. Hmm. Now, this is the same scale. If I take any point here, I think that point I have noted at A, this is B, maybe I will put it, this is 45 degrees. 
okay, and some point C. If I take this, hmm, this is phi because I am taking actually 45 does not look like 45 okay, because this is phi right and this is also phi you follow. Now, if my this phi is greater than this curve because point A phi is greater than tan inverse C D naught over C L that means phi is greater than C D naught over C L you follow which implies what it will accelerate okay. when it accelerates what happens omega r is increasing when it increases what will happen phi will decrease. So, it will come to that point B you understand because at B exactly phi is tan inverse that is the auto rotation point. Now, suppose your point is below that means phi is less than tan inverse C D naught phi is less than this that means it will decelerate. So, decelerate means what happens omega r is already large. So, it will start decreasing when it decreases phi will increase. Okay. So, it will go to B that means in auto rotation it is a stable point, okay. but what is the pitch angle you can give maximum please understand suppose i go at i draw a tangent to this line 45 degree this point okay <coughs> this is the point d this is theta max any point here this is acceleration this is deceleration that means i take an angle theta m draw the 45 degree exactly it meets the this curve at a tangent that means this is the point i can have any disturbance if i go beyond my rotor will start decelerating that is all it cannot take it you understand that means theta m is the maximum pitch angle you can have otherwise if you go to a pitch angle which is beyond this every point is deceleration. So, the rotor will simply decelerate from initial omega r it will stop and it will start rotating in the opposite direction that is very dangerous. Okay. Now, it is not that you can keep initially when you are hovering because with the power pilot will be operating his collective pitch or whatever pitch angle at some value. Okay. Now, it may be more than this it can be more than this there is nothing because it is a flight condition the weight everything matters he may be operating at a pitch angle which is larger than this usually that is what happens. The moment engine fails the pilot is told they use the word dump the collective that means reduce the collective angle that means decrease immediately otherwise if you hold it there rotor will stop. Okay and immediately he has to reduce the collective, but how much he will reduce that is another question. Okay. Usually reduces now the interesting part there is again a one more interesting thing you know that tan phi 
is u p over omega r ok. So, what is the maximum omega r you can have? When you have maximum omega r p must be minimum, minimum means the minimum point on this curve is the point where you will have maximum omega r. So, that is why if you decrease your collective from this point or anywhere what will happen? Omega r will increase, but if you decrease further again that will start <laughs> decreasing. So, you will have a maximum omega r that is the rotational velocity will happen only at the point where you have this is the minimum ok. Now, these are all drawn for a aerofoil because you can draw the because this is purely aerofoil characteristic ok which is done in a wind tunnel. You will find that normally most of the industries of course, uh, there are several reasons auto rotation condition is one choice of airfoil and then they will also have you know nose down pitching movement there are several reasons. So, you will find that uh, industry develop their own cross section of the aerofoil for rotor blade and then they use it, it has evolved over years of their testing. So, they want uh, you know reveal all the details. Now, this is a very interesting physics. Now, if you translate it to what we did for one section, you translate to a actual rotor. The actual rotor will be like this because I am ok and this is the direction of rotation. So, you have the blade ok it is like this, this is uh, now you see phi is large because omega r is small near the root that means phi is large blade may stall that is why we drew the diagram here stall. Then you have another region where phi has become smaller because from large I am decreasing ok. Now, here in that zone I may have this is where power from air to rotor that is air to rotor here it is actually rotor to the air that is it is like a normal operation this is from rotor to sorry rotor to air. Now, drag force will be here acting ok, here also drag force will be there I do not I am not showing it. Now, you see this is tall this is pulling it because phi you, you will always accelerate ok, phi x is still because initially this angle is large you are decreasing it phi x is attached flow, phi x is actually accelerating this, Maybe somewhere at one point it may be 0, f x may be 0. Then if you keep on decreasing phi, because what decreasing phi means what? Omega r is increasing, as you go towards the tip omega r is increasing, when omega r increases phi becomes small, when phi can be small you are actually decelerating that means, air is actually dragging the rotor. So, this is this is how the loading will be. So, it will be drawn something like this ok something you see the integrated value of this, this is a very very interesting problem for auto rotation what you should not have any power and integral of this drag force one is integral of drag force is total force, 
but integral of the r into the drag force that is the moment that is this is you take it as r integral f x d x okay that is 0 to 1 you take it and this is the total drag force another one is integral 0 to okay maybe uh, capital r i'm sorry maybe i should use dr okay r f x dr this is the torque okay now what what should be the condition for auto rotation you have drag force you have torque then what about force it is a very tricky stuff technically both must be 0 right because drag force must be 0 torque must be 0 now how do you achieve that that too with that kind of a distribution okay you have a distributed force okay now the they have to get it that's why it's it's a very very tricky problem if you really want to solve it how my forces will vary because you have to do it make sure that that is zero maybe you it should be possible it is possible to satisfy but whether that force is like because the force is aerodynamic drag it is not that you are applying the force if you can apply the force that is okay okay but this is an aerodynamic force right you may find one of them is zero another one may be a little bit there okay because i have not done the calculation but i felt that this is a very very interesting problem in the real life situation if you want to do but usually they'll say okay torque is zero good enough or you say drag force is zero that is also torque is zero because you are everything relating to power okay so I will say directly torque is 0. So I do not bother about but dynamically if you want to look at it as a full problem it is a rotor blade there should be no force on that that means f x must be 0 integral the you know, moment also must be 0 satisfying both is very very in real life situation but you will find maybe a little f x may be there or I am not sure what really happens the actual rotor system okay usually this is the at all because i thought that it's quite interesting from a physics point of view okay and steady please understand all assumptions now you will say you may ask a lot of questions how do i know what is my up because up consists of descent velocity and an inflow i don't have a clear definition for inflow in the turbulent wake state I have in the other state windmill brake state but not in the turbulent wake state so these are problems okay now you slowly understand that even a simple descent thing is not very easy problem to analyze because because we showed that uh, one minute I will show this diagram also okay this is just a dark patch so you have to make an approximation to that line and then say that is my inflow okay that inflow may not be exactly at every point you don't know what but you have to make an assumption that my inflow is constant over the whole rotor disc which is not true okay now you see the amount of assumptions you make which are really not correct but still you have to get an answer because you cannot so usually the power is zero they take it and use that condition come to auto rotate that's all okay it's a very very from a mathematical point of view it's a complex problem okay but what is normally done is take it as a simply curve show that cd naught by l okay minimum this operates fine and i will have my rotor loads
and you take typical one section and then say if that section is somewhere around I do not know what because the whole thing goes in a particular fashion that is why this is shown to the pilots usually because this is aerofoil characteristic C D not because you are not doing anything auto rotation you are just plotting that and minimum point you say okay hey the pilot should come immediately dump the collective below but then auto rotation is a stable rotor will continue to rotate but what rpm it will achieve that rpm depends on where phi value you are operating on okay you, is it clear i think with this i close your uh, all what we have learnt in climb climb is a very very smooth thing whereas descent is most complicated problem even today if you go to industry they will have some thumb rules just follow that that is all and auto rotation another important aspect is the inertia of the rotor because the rotor should have sufficient inertia inertia means mass into r square because it should be because if it has a large inertia it will not decay faster because pilot takes some time to react you are operating at a higher pitch angle and engine fails immediately drag force will try to stop so how do you take the inertia what inertia you should take so that the rotor should have that sufficient inertia because if it is very large then it is uh, aircraft is going to be very heavy the blade is going to be very heavy but if it is very light blade will stop so you should have sufficient inertia and there are some guidelines at least that much you should have that inertia of the rotor so that is another aspect this is purely from aerodynamics we are not looking at the inertia aspect okay because this is a very complex problem simply because you don't know what the inflow is that's all dynamics you can is fairly clear yeah why do we need to balance the force sir? it always be balanced by the reaction at the center what reaction net force no this is we have plotted this for a section no, sir, that, that. which one this one this is net force mm -hmm. it will balance by the reaction force at the center yeah but that force is acting on the system on the helicopter see if i isolate the blade because every see dynamically you have to look at it i can have zero reaction force what is the problem so what i mean to say is that we see what you are saying is you are holding it just because you are holding it so there is a force you are saying so, so we need to only balance the torque no but then but there is a force acting that will balance the reaction wait the reaction this is a very tricky thing you take this okay right this is the blade hm you say if i isolate this isolate right you say there is a force acting hmm somewhere i don't know whether this way or this way hmm if i force acts what will happen to this body from basic dynamics so force acts according to the net dynamics this is a net if i isolate a body you say there is a react yes i agree if you have a force this f see this is the other body right this will be like this the reaction force cancels the net aerodynamic which reaction force the, the net aerodynamic force cancel you said that it cancels cancels means what this is it should be zero see you take the aerodynamic force this is a rigid body you are having aerodynamic force acting on that right so the forces act on this are i am just drawing okay this will be resisted by this you may say right uh, oh, maybe the other way around whatever you may put it but then this entire force has to be what at the root you are going to give a moment 
see total force that act on a body right it has to be zero and you say moment is zero there are two conditions i have isolated this body okay this body is initially though it is rotating okay with a steady omega that means you will have only acceleration towards the center there is no acceleration in the tangential direction but if i isolate the body if i have a resultant force that means what it has to have an acceleration or deceleration depending on whatever direction you are having now deceleration will stop acceleration may take it up i may have torque zero you understand then it is like a rigid body i don't have any moment but i have a resultant force can you have like that yes or no see what i am saying is if you neglect if you have a leftover force that force will be resisted by the reaction here you understand see basic uh, mechanics of solids what do you do you take a beam you apply some load if you apply just this load will it be stable no because you have to have a reaction at the root end the reaction depends on what you apply here agreed or not because you should have a reaction force you will have a, some moment or whatever it may be you will have something this is dependent on this this is purely static condition agreed now this is the net body force but i want the moment zero because the torque the rotor drag is going to come it will try to stop the rotor i don't want the rotor to stop that means what that means what this must be hey balance means what this is balanced always this is balanced in static condition i want torque to be zero right but when i make torque zero am i making the force also zero not necessarily that is what i put this is torque is zero okay this is the force it it can be it need not be i don't know you follow now if you take it as a problem that i need to get both of them zero you no know, just a mathematical problem okay there can be a slight thing because auto rotation they don't keep on going all over the place because usually you dump the collective rotor rpm will come to some stabilized value because now you see the minimum phi which we said is maximum omega whether your maximum omega is what you have designed because please understand you rotate the rotor at a particular omega because that is a fixed omega are you going to achieve that omega or you are going to achieve some other omega which is higher than the designed value okay or is it going to be less than the designed value because these are other issues if you your omega increases more then your centrifugal load everything because the root will get tremendously structurally strain okay static equilibrium is one static equilibrium this is zero you say understood but our situation is this and you have a dynamics also it is there okay so you will have your dynamics is what the mass you may suppose this is a, this is, that's why it is a little bit complex problem there is a mass center mass center will have a acceleration agreed so it will have because this is rotating it will have an acceleration towards the center it can have a tangential acceleration 
agreed that is a mass center and then this body is also there can be an angular acceleration agreed your angular acceleration must be zero then torque is zero but your tangential acceleration is it zero because you want it to rotate at constant omega constant omega if it rotates means this must be zero because there is no tangential acceleration of the center of mass because this basic dynamics you know that this is you, this is r this is r alpha you know that from basic dynamics rigid body dynamics right tangential acceleration r is fixed constant r and that is an alpha now this should be zero so you need to have every condition should be whether you will satisfy usually torque is at zero that means your rpm is okay take it but i don't know whether the forces are really balanced to zero okay but it may come very close to zero see there will be some redistribution of the loads because you need to maintain because you don't want the rotor to that is why pilot dumps the collector he may not hold it at the same value he may keep changing it a little bit okay that only you have to ask the pilot but as a physics of the problem for a 2d airfoil it's explained but then real situation is much more complex okay because you will find different sections of the rotor blade operate in different different conditions some will be accelerating some will be decelerating okay the condition of this fx is it clear so i have confused you enough huh right so auto rotation is otherwise simple if you don't want to get into this business auto rotation is power is zero that what i wrote and that is good enough yeah uh-huh uh, does this curve mean that if the theta is kept the, no no this is alpha this uh, is a, this is the x axis is yeah the pilot is yeah if it is kept in the same thing mhm the n r tries to stay in the your talking about the stable point in time yeah 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 all these points are stable it will be stable here every point is stable so that means the n r tries to stabilize itself yeah 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 see this is drawn for a section you understand but that is why i said section means which section you are exactly balancing this that means somewhere uh, fx must be zero there may be here and here i don't know where they are but other places you are having a force in those places you are actually operating faster see this is for a section this is for the rotor every section cannot operate here it is not possible to operate you understand this is shown only two dimensional airfoil characteristic that's all is it clear no, am what i, I mhm you, mm -hmm. you integrate over the blade it's helping yeah yeah it, it, see some points you may be here some points you may be below yeah. okay so at some points you are accelerating some points you are decelerating integrate that is what some points you are accelerating you are decelerating net is net is zero that is why you have to integrate the along the blade knowing the characteristic otherwise mostly in the industry they may take in my opinion a typical section okay typical section in helicopters is about 70% or 75% but that is i don't know for auto rotation whether they take that value it could be even 60 i don't know that you may be able to tell me for that section you satisfy this after that the rest of them take over but here you see please understand we have not considered the elastic 
twist of the blade, nothing is considered. This is like a rigid blade, <laughs> because I keep a pitch angle and then only the inflow angle is taken, you follow. But in real life, it is not just the inflow alone, you are going to have even elastic twist of the blade and then you will also have blade flapping, please understand. So, that will also give a velocity. So, it is a more complex thing, that is why what industry will do auto rotation is, you have the code, you say power 0 the condition for which you keep on solving the problem for different descent velocities. You solve the problem, the trim of the helicopter, you solve the entire problem assuming some inflow velocity, because that you have to take this uh, you know, curve approximation. You say if I design at this velocity, this is my inflow, calculate every section what is the drag force, integrate over the whole thing, you will know what is the power. Okay. So, they will keep on drawing the power curve with respect to climb and descent, wherever it meets 0 or you extrapolate to 0, okay, that is the descent velocity, that is all. They go for power evaluation, not by section, but for explanation from physics point of view, this is taught, because it depends on the airfoil characteristic, but he is told reduce that is why why pilot is whenever they say you decrease the collective do not see there are very very see the general tendency is if you want to go up what do you do you increase the collective but provided the rotor is attached flow you increase the collective lift will go up sometimes if your angle is already large you increase the collective you may be going down further then in that case it defies your logic, hey, I have to reduce the collective, so that get it attached flow after that climb. But usually the instinct says, hey, if I reduce the collective, I am going to go further down. <laughs> because in auto rotation, what is going to happen? It is going to come down, the helicopter is going to come down, engine fails, because there is no power, it is going to come down. At that time, what you have to do? You have to decrease it, you follow and you decrease it to because if you are here, that is all, your rotor will stop and it will start rotating backwards. So, you decrease it such that you are in a stable zone. That is why he is told decrease, but how much you should decrease that may be uh, vehicle to vehicle or something. But this is drawn for aerofoil, not for the integrated value of the uh, rotor, because integrated if you have to draw that is a difficult task. Yeah. No, no, lag hinge may be there. See, lag hinge, yes, there is. Because please understand, moment you have to come, a force will come. See, lag hinge is not right at the center of the shaft. You understand? How rotor is uh, rotated? How power is given to that? How do you give? Because if you have a hinge, suppose you say this is the hinge. Huh? By rotating this, will you rotate this? How? No, hinge. See, th this is the shaft, I put a hinge. If I rotate this, what? Nothing will happen. So, I cannot have centrally lag hinged rotor. I, yeah. From the hinge, it will go. How it will go is this is what you take this. This is the okay. Or in this diagram, let us take this is the okay. You have a hinge in this direction, and you may have your blade starting here. Okay, here is the hinge. This is free to move back and forth about this point, but then a force will come here and that force gets transferred as a force and a moment and that is how you will be able to rotate the helicopter. 
otherwise if i directly put the hinge right here if i rotate the shaft uh, blade will not rotate so you don't have that situation always you will find that <laughs> transfer of power is there okay by the offset but this offset is desired you, you, most of the rotors they will have that is all transfers to the hinge it will go transfer it will get transferred because otherwise uh, without see hinge is is a good design because you do not transfer the moment but if you do not transfer anything at all then how will you rotate in the first place okay because if i put a ball bearing attach the rotor and in the inner race i attach the shaft what will you, you rotate the shaft the blade will just stay as it is it will not blade will not rotate <laughs> you follow you have to have a offset and of course the offset comes because of physical constraints also because you need to transfer the rotation okay is, is this clear or to an extent because this looks a little you know interesting i thought i will uh, give the physics because there are people from industry so it will be interesting to know how things are uh, really happening in a actual it's more complex problem now let us this is just a brief uh, thing what is called the ground effect because this just for uh, information to you because there is no calculation or anything like that this is the ground effect okay what ground effect means your rotor is operating close to the ground okay rather than far away because if you look at it just from uh, what happens the rotor inflow comes it hits the ground that means the normal velocity should go to zero at the ground level now this particular thing is idealized very simplistically your rotor inflow you put a mirror image here because this is a method of a mirror image you put another as though a fictitious rotor is rotating beneath the ground such that both of them are giving an inflow this inflow will come up like this that inflow goes down both cancel out and leaving earth as the ground as the zero okay now the effect of this will be to reduce the inflow there okay because you are pushing the air up so what happens is to lift the same weight the power required to hover near the ground is less because you are induced basically power induced power your induced velocity you require less therefore the power is less so if you are hovering near the ground you have you require less power but in other words the same thing is plotted in terms of thrust you if you give the same power that means you can lift more weight near the ground so that is why that particular thing is shown as a diagram that is t over t infinity t is the thrust rotor thrust over t infinity is when it is far away from the ground and the curve actually starts from 1 to 2 here z over r is the height of the rotor with respect to the ground now you see as you come near take this curve that uh, green as you come near to the ground your lifting capability increases for the same power because this is done for same power so you see i can lift more weight if i am near the ground so this particular thing is used because if you want to carry a little lift, they also go a little forward so that the power required becomes less so you carry a little extra load and then you can take off and fly but of course this effect is highly dependent on forward speed which i meant is 
crosswind. Suppose you are hovering near the ground, suppose there is a crosswind, what will happen? The wake will instead of coming down like this, it will be swept, then suddenly rotor will lose thrust. That is why this is also dependent on the forward velocity, the effect of ground depends on forward, if the forward velocity is to induced velocity, if it is more than 2, you see it has no effect t by t infinity, because the whole wake is pushed backwards and the effect of ground is lost. So, it is quite sensitive to side winds. Okay. Usually, the thumb rule is if you go beyond one rotor diameter, okay, ground effect is you can take it as 0 there is no ground effect, one rotor diameter, okay. that is the general thumb rule. And there are some expressions given some earlier, because we are not going to use this, basically this is for information, because if it is near the ground, you can develop more thrust, that is all for the same power, because this is called the ground effect of the helicopter rotor. Okay. From now on it is forward flight, the entire course will go because this is a much more complex problem, because I have indicated the complexity in hover, then of course, climb. In forward flight, why it is complex? Okay. Because we split the entire rotor disc, assume, because later we will define all the velocity components, motion, etcetera, everything will be defined. You say this is the rotor disc, you are viewing from the top. Okay. Now, here in this course, I normally take counterclockwise rotation is positive and my rotor is rotating in the counterclockwise direction, but usually you may ask which direction the rotor rotates. Okay. Europeans rotate clockwise, Americans rotate counterclockwise. Okay. Why? It is anybody's guess, it does not matter as far well as the rotor. Only thing is pilot has to get adjusted to that a little bit the direction of rotation, otherwise all the calculations everything is same. Somehow American helicopters, they always rotate counterclockwise, whereas all the, the, the European, the Germans, everybody, they, they rotate clockwise. Okay. So, we are going to take the counterclockwise rotation positive, so that is why I put psi and psi is basically the azimuth location which is omega t and omega is the rotor angular velocity and if you take kth blade, it will become psi k. Okay. Now, you see this rotor, in the earlier case, it was just uh, stationary, now it is moving forward. So, the forward direction, I put it up. So, there is a relative wind V, which is coming towards the rotor. Now, this is also rotating, this is having omega r, so you will find, see this is, you will have, this is omega r and you have v and this is psi. Okay. That means, in this half, the relative air actually acts. That means, the rotor section experiences a larger velocity of wind, whereas in this half, this is actually moving this way, that wind is also coming. So, there is a reduction in the velocity. So, this is advancing side. Okay. this is a retreating side. Okay. I will just briefly introduce. Now, you immediately know, because my velocity is now varying. Oncoming flow is time varying, because if you take a cross section, Our basic aerodynamics says what is the normal velocity, but that normal velocity is no longer a constant, it is varying with time. 
Okay. So, now you know in your aerodynamics, we have a situation where my oncoming velocity is time varying. Okay. This is the first complexity between fixed wing and rotary wing because you do not do in fixed wing theory a time varying oncoming flow. Okay, it is all fixed. Now, what happens because of that? Because of that, if you use directly the formula, lift is what half rho dynamic pressure card CL lift per unit length. This is varying time varying and square that means if it is one harmonic, it will go to two harmonic also. So, your loads are now having time varying, they vary with time. The moment you have any load, lift is a lift force acting. If aircraft is steady flight, please understand this is a steady velocity, V is steady, omega is steady. Even if both of them are steady, I am having my lift force as a result all the aerodynamic forces changing with time. When they change with time because this is like a beam, I am having a load which is changing that means what the blade is going to respond okay, because it is a flexible blade, it will respond. Now, when the blade responds, so you see higher velocity in advancing side than retreating side. Now, this is the first complexity. Now, blade response, this periodicity because you are varying cos, this is the root cause for periodic aerodynamic loads. Please understand periodic, I did not say harmonic, it is periodic because you will have all harmonics will come because you, you will be, you will see later is a highly complex. You even if you take first harmonic because this is the one per revolution you are putting square. When you put a square if a sin psi is there it is going to become sin square psi. Sin square psi you can put it in cosine 2 psi form that means you are getting second harmonic. Now you will find slowly you will keep on adding all harmonics harmonic means time varying. The moment you have time varying, what you are going to have? The blade is going to respond, blade is going to vibrate. Now, blade response you cannot neglect it in forward flight. You cannot say my rotor is rigid, it does not no matter I may oscillate my load, but my blade is not going to respond at all. Okay, that is a, that is an assumption you can make. Okay, but then you cannot fly because then it is like a propeller. In the propeller, it is very stiff. Whereas in helicopter, the blades are not stiff; they are very, very flexible. So response of the blade you have to include. This is what the aeroelastic. Now you see aeroelasticity cannot be separated from helicopter dynamics in forward flight. I need to have. in hover you please understand we never talked about blade motion only blade pitch angle inflow nothing else we did not even mention about flap lag or torsional deformation nothing we treated as though blade is rigid we did not even mention about its flexibility whereas in forward flight you cannot do that you have to have the blade response. Now, when the blade starts moving up and down, now this is adding another complexity. My load is changing, as a result my blade is oscillating. Now, my blade is oscillating, therefore what will happen? My load also because my angle of attack everything will change. As a result, it is an aeroelastic problem. You cannot split these two, okay. because what we normally study in the aerodynamics, there is a steady flow. The angle of the aerofoil is kept at some pitch angle, you find the lift, you find the drag, wonderful and you find the pitching moment. 
Okay. This is a steady case. Now, here one is the V is changing. Because of the V, this load is changing. Because of the load change, this is going to oscillate up and down. Now, when this oscillates up and down, that is going to change the angle of attack, everything. So, my load is this is the simple aeroelastic problem, but it is complicated. Now, how do I solve? I do not have any theory which says that it is an unsteady aerodynamic situation, okay, but I still use whatever you have learnt in basic aerodynamics, steady flow. We will use the same condition okay? and that is what is of course, it is complicated in a research level you complicate the whole thing, but here for the course you know we will do it very, very simplistic. And then of course, you see because the vibration, now because this is oscillating, so you have vibration. You also have these two phenomena which is the stall, the blade will stall. Why the blade should stall? You may ask, because stalling is your angle of attack is going up beyond the whatever stall angle. Here advancing side your velocity is more. That means, what you will generate more lift, please understand. Retreating side velocity is less, if you keep the pitch angle same, then one side you generate more lift, other side you generate less lift, assuming inflow is same, inflow is another problem then what will happen? The helicopter will roll. Okay. So, what is done is pitch angle on the advancing side you reduce it, on the retreating side you increase the pitch angle such that you balance both and this is done through the cyclic control which you learnt. Now, when you increase the pitch angle you may also stall somewhere that happens at some forward speed. So, you will have dynamic stall as a part of aeroelastic problem. Then the other one I mentioned reverse flow. You know that this flow is coming, this is omega r. If this is small, omega r is small near the root, the flow will be coming from trailing edge to the leading edge this is called the reverse flow. Okay. So, you have all problems related to aerodynamics in the forward flight.